In today's video we're going to be making some upgrades to my previously built weather station, which was suggested by you guys in the comments. Together these upgrades have substantially improved the accuracy, reliability and battery life of the weather station. I've also included a link to the public ThinkSpeak channel in the video description, so you can have a look at the most recently recorded data. To start off, I'm going to be replacing the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor with a BME280 sensor. This sensor measures temperature, humidity and pressure with much better accuracy and is faster too. This also means that I can remove the separate pressure sensor from my original build and I'll leave the light sensor at the top in place. The next change that was suggested was made by quite a few people and this was to replace the read switch on the anemometer or wind speed sensor with the Hall effect sensor. I haven't used one of these before and there are quite a few different options available, so the one I chose was an Allegro A3213. This sensor is polarity independent and has a latch digital output, so it's quite a good fit as a replacement for a read switch. I'm also going to be replacing the original 18650 cell with a higher capacity 3000mAh lithium polymer cell. This cell will give it around 30-50% to more energy storage, so it'll be able to run longer between charges and also has built in overcharge and over discharge protection. Let's start by replacing the sensors. I'm going to be installing the BME280 module with the sensor facing towards the stand. This shields it from any direct sunlight that manages to get into the housing, and also gives it a bit more protection from moisture. The sensor is still spaced slightly away from the stand, so there aren't any pockets of air trapped around it. Replacing the reed switch with the Hall effect sensor is a bit more involved, as I have to first remove the reed switch which I molded in place with resin. I also didn't want to have to print a whole new housing just for the new sensor. After a couple of failed attempts to remove it, a drill eventually worked to crack the switch and I could then pull out all of the pieces. I also cracked the top of the housing, but fortunately resin prints repair quite well with more resin, so that will be an easy fix. I added some wiring to the sensor before installing it in the housing, so that I can again pour some resin around it to hold it in place and seal off the top of the sensor housing. I shouldn't need to do anything with the magnets in the anemometer, if they worked with the reed switch then they should easily work with the Hall effect sensor as well. Now that that's all done, we can make up a new wiring harness to connect the sensors to the fire beetle board. This is where I made some changes to the wiring. Rather than having the sensors stay on all the time, a suggestion was made to turn the sensors on and off using the IO pins, as they don't draw much current. So I've got the BME280 sensor connected to one digital pin, and the light and hall effect sensor connected to another. This means that I can now turn the sensors on and off only when measurements are taken, so this should further extend the battery life. While we're on the topic of turning sensors on and off, I also made some changes to the code. The first and probably most significant is a lookup table for the wind speed. Ian had a number of ideas to improve this in the code pointing out that the relationship between wind speed and the rotation time is not always linear. He also included a formula to use as a starting point. I used this along with some measured data to eventually calibrate the sensor, and it now uses this table to find the actual wind speed. Next I made the changes to the digital pins, to turn them on and off as they are needed, rather than staying on all the time. I also reduced the on cycle time to about 8 seconds, as this is all that's needed by the wind sensor. Lastly, I moved the Wi-Fi connection right to the end of the cycle, so that the connection isn't active for the full cycle time. I also added a timeout to the Wi-Fi connection attempt routine. In my previous code, the board would stay on and keep attempting to connect to the Wi-Fi network even if it was temporarily unavailable, or there was an error. This eventually dramatically reduced the battery life and resulted in the station dying in a day or two if this occurred. It'll now try for 10 seconds and if there's no connection available then it just goes to sleep anyway. Let's test the power consumption on the weather station now that we've made some hardware and some software changes which should have helped to make it more efficient. So the Fire Beetle board now uses a little over 100mA when starting up, 
It settles at around 45 to 50 milliamps when taking readings, which is for most of the on time, and it now goes down to just 0.01 milliamps or 11 microamps during sleep, which is a pretty substantial improvement over the last version. This one's using almost 100 times less power during sleep mode than previously. So if we calculate the expected battery life using a 10 minute cycle time with 10 seconds of on time in each cycle and an average current draw of 60 milliamps, with the new battery we should get just under 3000 hours or 124 days of runtime. So that's 4 months of a single charge, which is also a great improvement. I filled in the void around the Hall effect sensor and repaired the crack with some UV resin. I then let it cure in the sun for a few hours, so we can now put it all back together. I 3D printed a bracket to mount the weather station onto a 25mm pole, which is easier to mount onto a railing or fence post. Now I know that improving the battery life means that it'll hardly ever need to be charged, but to make it a truly plug in and forget weather station I wanted to add a solar panel so that the battery is always kept charged. I'm going to use this 5 volt panel which I have from a previous project. It claims to be a 1 amp panel but that seems a bit optimistic for its size. In any case it's way over what we need to replace the 25 or so milliamp hours used each day. I'm going to use a DF robot solar power management board to control the charging. This board basically takes the power from the solar panel and charges the battery. It also provides a regulated power supply to the Fire Beetle board. I've made a 3D printed bracket and housing to hold the panel and the solar power management board. And these will be installed on the same pole underneath the weather station. So that's it for my modifications. It has been running for about 3 weeks since I upgraded it, and you can go to my ThingSpeak channel linked in the video description if you'd like to have a look at the data being collected. Since the power consumption has gone down quite substantially, I've been thinking about trying to power it using some sort of supercapacitor arrangement, rather than a battery. Let me know if you've done this or if you've got any suggestions for it in the comments section. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.